Grace, mercy, and peace to you from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ. Amen. The text for our meditation this morning is written for us in St. Paul's letter to the Ephesians, chapter 5, beginning at verse 15. Consider carefully, then, how you walk, not as unwise people, but as wise people. Make the most of your time, because the days are evil. For this reason, do not be foolish, but understand what the will of the Lord is. And do not get drunk on wine, which causes you to lose control. Instead, be filled with the Spirit, by speaking to one another with psalms, hymns, and spiritual songs, singing and making music with your hearts to the Lord, by always giving thanks for everything to God the Father in the name of Jesus, our Lord, Jesus Christ. So far our text, let us pray. Heavenly Father, we have gathered in your house to hear your holy word. We pray that you would increase our faith through it. Sanctify us through the truth. Your word is truth. Amen. Please be seated. In Jesus the Christ, dear fellow redeemed. Australia is home to some of the world's most venomous snakes. Depending on who you ask, some will say it has the top 10 most venomous. There is disagreement on how you measure it. But regardless of how you look at the list, two of the world's most venomous snakes were very common in the area that I grew up. And on the farm, we had a couple of rules. You never went outside without boots on. And you always watched where you stepped. My grandfather would always tell us, watch out for snakes. So if you were walking through longish grass, you were always watching where you stepped, even on a path you would be looking and watching for snakes. The idea of being careful where you step is embedded in the text before us. But Paul uses it not in the sense of just how you're going to walk down a path, but how you're going to live your life. Paul was writing to Christians People that believed that Jesus was their savior from sin. People that trusted that his life on the, uh, his perfect life and his innocent death on the cross had made full satisfaction for their sins. They knew that God loved them and wanted them to be with him in heaven. So Paul wrote to people just like you and me, who believe and trust those things. He said, be careful how you walk. We may think that now that we're in the faith, now that we're surrounded by God's love, we're no longer in danger. That's not what God through Paul communicates in our text says, be careful where you step. Watch how you walk because the danger is real. He says, to be wise people, not unwise people. Okay. So that means there has to be thought put into how we live. The, the things that we, we do, the priorities that we have in life, the things that we're chasing after and a, a dreaming of obtaining, or maybe a better word is attaining, okay. we have to put thought into those things and be wise in those decisions that we make. So what is the consequence of foolishness or unwise choices. 
they can separate us from the love of God in Christ. We may not have venomous snakes on our path, not real ones. But do not think that Satan's bite isn't just as deadly today as it was in the garden. And he lays there wanting you to step on him. He en entices you. And just as snakes often camouflage themselves so that they can't be seen, Satan works that way too. He can set a bait that just tastes, or maybe better is, feels so good that we don't see the poison in the activity. There are even things in our life, like alcohol, as Paul mentions, that in and of themselves aren't sinful. But they can be deadly in their use. He tells us not to get drunk on wine. Why? Because when you get drunk on wine, you lose control. I've never heard anyone say, I got drunk last night and made the best decision of my life. <laughs> no, it's the opposite, right? Time and time again, people lament that they got drunk and did something stupid. Or in the words of our text, foolish or unwise. Why does that happen? It's because alcohol has an effect on our body and all narcotics and drugs do. They change our thought processes. Alcohol lowers our inhibitions so that we do something that if we were of a sober mind, we would never do. And so even though alcohol is not sinful in and of itself, we can be very unwise in its use. And our use of alcohol can have great earthly consequences. And it can have great eternal consequences too. Because alcohol doesn't just affect us and our use of it. It affects all the people around us too. The people in our family, our friends. So Paul uses that just as an example. It's not an exclusive list. It's just as an example of how we can make unwise decisions. I would say for young men today, one of the unwise decisions that they make and I've been guilty of it too, so I'm pointing back here as well, is the use of video games. When Paul talks about redeeming the time, making the most of your opportunity because the days are evil, he's saying do something good with your time. Now, video games aren't in and of themselves sinful. But boy, they have a way of sucking up the time, don't they? Yeah. Could that time be better spent? Could that time be better used for your own personal growth and for the benefit of your fellow man? I would argue, yes, it can. So be wise. Because the days are evil. You have an enemy that you may not see, but he's after you. Now, I say that not to create this, this terrifying fear, which is probably like me in the face of a snake. Okay? Okay. I don't say that to freeze you but to cause you to take action. Jesus said he knows his sheep and they're safely in his hands 
and no one can snatch them out of his hands. That's you. You're, you're safely in Jesus' hands. But outside of those hands is a real world of danger. You don't want to depreciate the danger that you're in. Because then you'll dangle your feet over the side of the hands. You'll see how far you can stretch and, and still keep contact with Jesus' hands. No, we want to have a proper fear of the danger we're in. So it causes us to always move back to the center of the hands. That's what Jesus wants you to do. He wants you to realize that you've got an enemy that wants to take you down. That wants to sink his venomous fangs deep into you. So that you lose your faith. So that then you'll move back. You'll move back to those nail-pierced hands. Those very hands of Jesus carried your guilt to the cross. Those nailed hand of Jesus carried all of your foolish and unwise sinful decisions to Calvary's cross. And those sins were pinned with Jesus to that cross. And there he made full satisfaction for all of your sins. So that now Jesus' blood is the anti-venom to that bite of Satan sunk in the garden which has infected us all. Now through Jesus, you don't have to fear Satan. You can rest assured in those nail imprinted hands so there's danger around you don't be terrified be wise stay where Satan can't get you stay safe in Jesus hands may God grant you his spirit and fill you with God's love that you know that every day is one step, safe step, closer to heaven. To God be the glory, now and forever. Amen. Please stand for the blessing. And now may the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, guard and keep your hearts and minds through faith in Christ Jesus until life everlasting. Amen. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we know that when Satan bit our first parents, he plunged humanity into sin and death and destined it to hell. But you in your great love sent your Son to rescue us from our sins and to deliver us from Satan's bite. We pray that you would continue to pour out your Spirit upon us Every day, make us more and more confident of your love and forgiveness in Jesus. But Father, we also pray that you would pour out your Spirit upon us to give us wisdom. Help us to discern the danger that we're in from the world around us. That we would carefully step through our earthly lives. That we would bring great honor to you and service to our fellow man. We pray that you would use us to carry out all the tasks that you have planned for us to do. Bless us and strengthen us this day to this end and always. Amen.
The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Amen.